All right, next up, let's take a look at the structure and properties of some ethers. Um, so let's just think about uh, dimethyl ether. And if we think about dimethyl ether, right, oxygen is more electronegative than carbon. So we have a net dipole pointing towards um, the oxygens. And then, of course, we've got the lone pair. So we've got a net dipole um, facing up towards the oxygen, right? So it is a, at least somewhat polar molecule. It's not hugely polar, but it is at least somewhat polar, right? Depends on the size of your substituents. Um, overall, ethers they can't hydrogen bond with themselves, right? Because it doesn't have an OH bond, but it can with other things. This is why it's often um, a good solvent because it helps to dissolve things that do have hydrogen bonds, right? So for example, um, we've got our ether here, we've got the lone pair, it can hydrogen bond with water. Right, we can form a hydrogen bond right here. So essentially the ether can act as an H bond acceptor only. Whereas something like water can act as an H, plus H bond acceptor and donor. Um, of course, because we have that dipole moment, the bo boiling points of ethers are higher than non-ethers. So let's just take a look at some relative compounds. Right, so over here on the right, we have propane that uh, boils at negative 42 degrees Celsius. In the middle, we have uh, dimethyl ether. This one boils at negative 25 degrees Celsius. And then finally on the left, we have ethanol at 78 degrees Celsius. So you can see that it does have a higher boiling point than a purely nonpolar molecule such as propane, but it's still very low, right? It doesn't have that hydrogen bonding ability that something like ethanol does, which helps skyrocket that uh, boiling point. Um, just some common ethers that we'll see um, throughout the lecture and labs. We already went over one of them, but let's just go ahead over more. Um, there's diethyl ether. Uh, this one's very common. Sometimes people will just straight up just call this ether. Um, so if anybody says, hey, you know, we're going to use ether as the solvent or, you know, just uses the word ether, most likely they're talking about diethyl ether. Um, as we discussed, we already have, uh, we already discussed THF, right, very common solvent. Um, and then finally, there's one more common solvent. This is what's known as 1,4-dioxane, um, just another common ether type solvent. Um, eth while ethers are very useful as solvents, you have to be careful with ethers. This is like a very common issue with ether, um, and it has to do with its storage. So for example, if you have diethyl ether or any type of ether um, and you're storing it, maybe you're storing for a long time, obviously there's oxygen in the air um, and there's probably at least some light hitting the bottle, but it doesn't even really need light. There just needs to be some oxygen. Um, and over a long amount of time, since so it's a relatively slow um, process, these ethers will form peroxides, right, where we have this oxygen-oxygen type of bond. So you can check out the mechanism. We won't go over it, but if you're interested, um, take a look at it, right? And they'll form these peroxides, and these peroxides are dangerous because they are explosive, right? So if you have an old bottle of ether, um, the recommended thing to do is always check for any solidified um, contents on the bottle. If you see any solid, clear crystals, those are most likely peroxide crystals, and you want to be very careful with handling it um, because it is explosive. 